an old model steam engine which was made circa 1896 part 10. This is method number one, showing me making a built up type of crankshaft with the crank webs machined from two separate pieces. First of all I'm showing you something you must never do, never ever leave the chuck key in the chuck like this. And also when removing the chuck as I'm doing here, never use the chuck key as a lever, you need to use a piece of wood in the jaws. It's also a good idea to put a piece of wood on the bed so that the chuck doesn't strike the bed as you remove it. In this case there's not much chance of that happening because I'm built like a tank and this is a very small chuck. Having carefully removed the three jaw chuck, here I'm fitting the four jaw independent chuck. And once again, under no circumstances must you tighten the chuck onto the spindle using the chuck key. Generally in the workshop I have some bits of mahogany like this laying about and they're very useful, particularly for jobs like this. Using a piece of steel bar could be okay, but it's a very heavy part, whereas a piece of mahogany is strong enough to do the job and isn't heavy in case you drop it on your foot. On a Myford ML7 type lathe, the back gear lever is right at the front, and unless you rotate the pin inside the headstock, the spindle remains locked. Here you can see I've moved the back gear lever into the down position, and now I'm testing that it's working. I'd better mention right at the beginning that all these parts are far too big for what I'm making. If you look at the original crank webs, they're very small. But for the purposes of the video, I've made them larger than they need to be. They're easier to see on the screen. At the end of this video, I end up with two crank webs that I'm not going to use because they're too big. In the next video, I'll make the proper crank webs to the right size, using a different method. After using a sharpie felt tip pen to mark the brass so I can see the lines, here I'm marking out the positions for the holes. I need to drill one hole which will be a quarter of an inch diameter and another hole which will be three sixteenths of an inch in diameter. These parts need to be very accurately marked, the centre less so because the part that I'm making is much bigger than it needs to be anyway. In this clip I've fitted one of the pieces of brass into the four jaw chuck and adjusted it so that the centre drill is on the centre line of the cross. A quick touch with the centre drill with the chuck rotating confirms that it's in the right position. Next I remove this part from the chuck altogether and go back to the bench. Using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper I clean up one side of each of the pieces of brass. And then using some Loctite 603 retaining compound I just stick them together. By the time I'd made a cup of tea and by the time I'd drunk the cup of tea the Loctite had cured sufficiently for me to fit it in the four jaw chuck. Don't forget the jaws are holding this, not just the Loctite. I know I should use some parallels for this job, but I find these pieces of mahogany to be flat enough to allow me to make sure that the piece of brass is nice and squared in the jaws. Now it's time to double check that the hole is still in the right place and then use a centre drill to drill the hole. There's a bit of a problem with this clip, the camera on the tripod is leaning against the lathe and it's actually the camera that's moving, not the centre drill. Sorry about that. I do need to buy a proper camera mount for the smaller workshop so I can film the Myford turning operations from the other side of the lathe because the front view is obscured by the tool post and just about anything else I can think of including my hands. In the main workshop I have a camera mount screwed to a shelf and I need to rig up something similar in this smaller workshop. You've just been watching the complete sequence of events. Centre drill first, one imperial size drill under the size that I want, which is quarter of an inch, and then I finish it off with a quarter of an inch diameter reamer. And because it's a hand reamer that tapers slightly at the tip, I push it all the way through so the diameter is parallel. Now I've turned the block around in the four jaw chuck and I'm drilling the smaller hole. Same as before, centre drill first, 
followed by a twist drill which is one imperial size less than 3 16 Fractions generally seem to confuse a lot of people these days so I don't mention measurements very much. If you want to see what one imperial size less than 3 16 is, just type imperial drill set into Google and have a look at an imperial drill set. Some of the drill size charts are very confusing. I prefer to see a picture. The click you've just heard was to me turning the contactor off to kill the power to the lathe because the job is basically finished. For now anyway, there's something else to do yet, but that will be shortly. Here, I've pushed some quarter of an inch diameter stainless steel and some three sixteenths of an inch diameter stainless steel into the holes and they fit perfectly. As you can see, these crank webs are far too big. I've temporarily fitted the actual connecting rod and that shows it up to be so. The main thing though is the assembly is fine. These marks are unimportant because the outer side of these is going to be ground on a belt sander. So now it's time to remove the four jaw chuck and replace it with the three jaw chuck. And as you can see I'm using a piece of mahogany to remove the chuck and unscrew it from the spindle. Being very careful not to drop it on the bed. This is a bit heavier than the three jaw chuck. It's still a good idea to have a small piece of board that you can slip underneath the chuck just in case you drop it on the bed. I once chipped the edge of an almost brand new Myford lathe. I was wiring the lathe and I put it in reverse, the chuck spun off and chipped the edge of the bed. That was a bit of a painful moment. The good news is I only ever did that once. With the chuck fully tightened up I gave it a quick test run and then it's on with the next part of the job. Here's a quick flashback because I'm going to use some more 603 for this next job. I fitted the short piece of stainless steel into the three jaw chuck and coated it, not too heavily, but fairly liberally with Loctite 603. Then all I have to do is fit the brass part which slides on quite easily. Time for another cup of tea and after that I'm ready to machine. But before I start the machining process, I rotate the part in the chuck so I can get the micrometer in place as shown here. I need to turn down the thickness of the crank web to the same as the existing ones, but I'm leaving the centre part a bit bigger because I'm not going to use these crank webs on this engine. They're far too big. I'm going to make smaller ones, but these are in scale for a larger engine. I find a good way of doing it is to set the tool at such an angle so I can turn from the centre and move outwards. That way you avoid the initial high impact on the edges as you're going for the cut. Time now to check the size with the micrometer to make sure it's the same size as the small crank web that was fitted to the engine and it is exactly the same size. In this clip I'm doing exactly the same with the other crank web. This clip is running at a high speed just to get through it quicker because the principle is exactly the same as you've just seen. Now I have two crank webs that are identical to each other but both of them are too big for this job and they both need some external shaping too. Removing the stainless steel peg is very simple. I hold it in a pair of pliers and use a small blowtorch to heat the peg and the brass and then after a short while it comes loose and because the parts are still very hot, I'm winding off the part using a scriber, a very useful tool. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is method one, and these would work perfectly, but they look a little bit on the big side. The next pair I make, I'm going to make a lot smaller and do it in a different way. But that is in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.